Welcome to the ITU Plenipotentiary Conference 2018 here in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Nisef Utai Purcell, who is the Acting Secretary General for the Commonwealth Telecommunications Organization. Nisef, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I'd like to start off by asking you, there's considerable attention being placed on harnessing the power of information communication technologies, ICTs, as an enabler for good, for development, for the benefit of people, families, communities and nations. What is your personal perspective on this? Well, it's great. ICT is, is changing the way we communicate, the way we learn, play, the way we uh, develop. But we need to look at the availability of ICTs or access. We need to make sure that uh, we work with the governments to make sure that access is affordable. There's no point having access and having a lot of technologies, but people can't afford it. And then we also need to look at the relevance. What is relevant for, the pe for our people? Because every country is different. Every culture is different. So therefore, it must be people-centered, it must be relevant to the culture, and it must have all the benefit that it's promising everybody. So, um, and then of course, we need to look at the uh, security um, of the internet, uh, because um, the more the social media is out there, the even more security that is required because while ICT is great as you mentioned there's also cases where its impact on the individual on the people is uh, very negative um, because social media has no borders so therefore anyone can say anything about another person about another government so that is a negative um, part of ICTs that uh, we also need to consider. Now, this, this plenipotentiary conference is the first since the world agreed on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals uh, in 2015. Perhaps you could provide us with some examples of how ICTs are helping to drive sustainable development in the Commonwealth countries. Yes, of course. Well, there is lots. Um, the SDGs 2030 talks about in fact, it's the first time ever that SDGs or a uh, um, agreed um, document or communicate by the uh, UNGA, uh, United Nations General Assembly, has e ever touched on ICTs as a tool for development. And I'm glad that when I was in the ITU, I was involved very much in it. Now, when we look at uh, all the issues in SDG, um, SDG 2030, it's about education, it's about health, it's about the environment, it's about climate change. And all these things, we can use ICTs as a tool. For example, education um, and health. In every Commonwealth developing country, there is a lack of doctors, there's a lack of teachers, especially where the rural villages or rural areas are concerned. So there's a capability now of developing ICTs so that people in the rural areas can actually dial into the doctors in the business district and say, hey, you know, we've got this case here. And they're able to see, the doctors are able to treat or provide uh, medicine for people out there. And it's the same as uh, education with e-learning. Now, I must admit that e-learning has been talked about for so long, but uh, in the developing countries, especially in the least developed countries, the small island developing states, and also landlocked countries, is still a struggle to get that. And then it goes back to what I was talking before about, um, availability or access has to be affordable, it has to be secure. So all of these things link. But uh, I'm very happy that in the uh, SDT 2030, it's now um, um, looking at using ICTs. And then it doesn't stop there, it goes to climate change. 
The key thing is about uh, capacity building, raising awareness of people. Then um, when with climate change come disasters, natural disasters. So, and uh, that is where the importance of the satellites come in as a technology because, for example, the earthquake in Nepal, every mobile tower was demolished. And so I went there, um, I, what we did was providing uh, satellite equipment. And these are the equipment that actually helped the government to know what's happening out there. And it's the same as uh, Dominica, the hurricane of 2015. I went there, the, no, none of the mobile uh, towers uh, you know, survived. And there was no way to communicate to other parts of the island to find out what's happening and how can the government help them. So ICTs can actually help um, government and other organization to inform to decision um, on how to do, uh, how to help the people out there. And um, that is where I'm saying satellites, very important, because it was the um, satellite mobile and also the, uh, the uh, global broadband uh, area networks that we took, and it's amazing. When we went to the most remote area of Dominica, we set up the, uh, um, the BGANs and it worked. All of a sudden, you know, people are, the police are talking to the government and say, this is the situation, so please send blankets or these other things. So that is where the uh, SGTs uh, or the ICTs can actually help every country and the world to achieve the uh, SDG goals of 2030. Now about half the world's uh, people are connected to the internet, the other half is not. I wanted to ask you, what do you think uh, we should be doing to get everyone connected? Yes, of course, uh, since 2016, it's been uh, said that four billion people, especially from developing countries, don't have even any access. And of course, and that uh, relates to half the population. And uh, what we need to do is um, the importance of uh, international uh, platforms like the ITU um, that provides the guidelines to every country. But every country, every government, these are the people responsible. You know, it's up to each country to make sure that um, their people are connected, not just around the um, economic area or the uh, business area, but out in the rural areas. The problem is no business in its right mind, no operator, no mobile operator, will go and spend millions or hundreds of thousands to build um, the business in an area where there's no profit. And it, if I were a businessman, you know, I, I would never do that. And this is where the government intervene. This is where the government come in and uh, look at different options. For example, universal access, you know, they can talk with the uh, operators and then give them back some money to go and develop the other areas. So that is, uh, I believe, is the best way of trying to connect um, everybody. But um, yes, we need to look at issues. For example, uh, in, th in the Commonwealth, there's a lot of um, landlocked countries. So they have about four or five countries to get permission for, you know, uh, technologies to come in. So lots of issues, but we can do it. You said, well, thank you very much for joining us in the studio today. And we look forward to catching up with you again in the future. Thank you.